So in this video, we are going to talk about local storage, uh, which is the JavaScript uh, implementation of data storage that we can use in our browser. So in App Studio and in our uh, mobile app, we can store user input uh, to the, the local browser, so the local user's device which means that data will be available even if they close the app or, or refresh uh, the app uh, in, in any way. So this is useful because it means we can persist data and we can persist information uh, that we don't want to lose. Now with local storage, there are some limitations. Uh, and if you wanted to learn a bit more about local storage, you can search for local storage, JS or JavaScript and uh, some of the top links uh, are particularly useful. Um, if you wanted to learn about the limitations, uh, again, Google is a good resource, but importantly, one of the key limitations of local storage is the size limit. So browsers enforce a certain limit, and typically it's only a few megabytes that we are allowed to store and this is enforced by the browser, so whether it's Chrome or whatever the mobile device browser is. So five megabytes is not that much if we were storing lots of data. So local storage is useful for uh, storing some, some basic user information. Um, nothing major. If we wanted to store large amounts of data, uh, we'd want to use a, a local database, for example but that's not, the, not covered in, in this video. Also note, you would uh, never store sensitive information to local storage. So you'd never store passwords or information that really uh, should be uh, encrypted or kept secret. Okay, so that's a bit of a background. Uh, let's now have a look at what we're gonna try and solve. So let's just remind ourselves of how our test app currently works. So at the moment, uh, I've got a form and I've entered a couple of details here. I'm gonna hit save and we get confirmation that it's been saved. And what happens there, if we go to the second form, our details show uh, here, the details that I've just entered. So that's all fine, but if I refresh the app, so refresh the browser, or this would be the same as on a mobile device, if you closed the app uh, from running and then reopened it, and we go back to form two, the details are lost. So we want to use local storage to make sure that we can persist this information. Okay, so let's have a look at how we could do that. So let's go into the code for our form remind ourselves of what we've got attached to the save button on click event. So here, when we hit save, it's retrieving the values from the name input and the text area and putting an HTML break between them and then assign it di assigning it directly to the inner HTML or the, the kind of content of the label on the results page. So it's setting setting the content of that label straight away. The problem is that that's then reset and cleared when we refresh the browser. So what we want to do here, instead of directly assigning it to um, the label value, we're gonna create a new uh, variable. And we're gonna comment out this line for now. So we're going to, in the same way, we'll grab this information so we still want to use that, so I'll copy that. But let's just assign it to a variable uh, to keep things tidy. So we'll call it my details and the line. So we've got the information available now in a, a variable called my details. And now we're going to use the local storage syntax. So to, to access a or create an item on our local storage. We use uh, the syntax local storage and then dot, and we can call it whatever we want, but I will call it the same as the variable I've created up here uh, to avoid any confusion. Uh, so I'll call it my details, and we can just assign a value to it. So we can assign 
this my details variable value to the local storage my details variable. Okay. What I'm going to do here as well is add a console.log line just so that we can see on our JavaScript console in our browser what's going on with local storage uh, when we save it. Okay, so let's just at this point, let's run this and uh, see what happens. Okay, so let's enter some details here and hit save. Okay, and we'll notice that in the JavaScript console, so this is the JavaScript console and Chrome developer tools. Uh, of course, other browsers typically have developer tools as well. And the console.log command over here has logged it to the JavaScript console. The, the whole object, the whole local storage object. And we can see that there is a my details item in there and it's been assigned a value uh, that we've uh, grabbed from the input fields. Okay, so that seems to have set our local storage my details variable. So that's great. But of course, if we go over to our form two, nothing is showing over here because we're not actually putting that value into this label. So what we'll do is go over to our form two, which is where we have the results. And we will access the on show event for the form. So I've right clicked on the form, go to event and on show. That will create the on show event. And then I'm going to do a, an if statement. So what we're checking here is we want to check if the local storage dot my details item effectively has a value. So that's what this line here means. If there is a value, then what we're going to do is assign that value to the inner HTML of the label. So we'll copy that again. Okay, so what this is doing is checking whether there is a value in my details on local storage. And if there is, it will assign that value to the label. And this will run every time form two shows. So let's just save this and, and run it and see what behavior we get. Okay, so we've refreshed our app. If we go to uh, form two, ah, well, we can see there. Um, now, why are we getting that error? Let's just correct that. And we got that error because I've named the label incorrectly. So we got that because I use label result instead of label results. So there's a good example of uh, troubleshooting when you get an error. So let's correct that. We'll hit run again, and hopefully that error will be gone. So again, let's go to form two. Ah, okay, so this is actually showing because I've already set local storage before. Um, so let me just, let's change the local storage value uh, so that we can give a better demonstration of that. Okay, so let's go to form one. Instead of my details, let's call it saved details and local storage. And in form two, let's do it saved details. So just doing this for demonstration purposes, because on a previous uh, test run, I've actually already set the local storage dot my details value. Um, so we just want to demonstrate what it will look like when it's uh, fresh. So let's run this. Okay. And that still seems to be set, which is interesting.
and I think it just needed a hard refresh. So I did control shift R to hard refresh, cleared the cache. Okay, so again, another example of troubleshooting, if the behavior doesn't quite seem to tie in with what you're expecting, make sure the app is actually fully refreshed. And a good way of doing that on Windows is control shift R. That does a hard refresh and normally clears the cache. So right here, we've got the default state of the app. There is no value stored in local storage. So the value of this label is the default value. Now, if we go to home, let's actually enter uh, my details. Okay, so let's do that and hit save. And we'll notice again, because we've got that console.log um, line in our code here, we are getting the local storage being logged into console. And we actually have two values here because we set my details previously. And now we have saved details, which is what we want. And so now if we go to form two, we can see our new saved details are showing uh, in the label. Now, so that we've now persisted that data, just to demonstrate this, let's do a hard refresh. So I've reloaded the app and go to form two and the details reload in there. So we have implemented persistent data. This information is stored in local storage so we can close the app and reopen it and that data is, is saved. So the syntax is quite simple. Uh, to use local storage as a recap, we just use local storage dot and then specify the variable name that we want to store within local storage and then we can assign it a value. We can either assign it from a variable or we could just type in a manual value such as uh, that. I'll undo that to keep it uh, consistent. Also note, we kind of have the issue here that we can't clear this local storage value uh, without actually clearing the cache fully on our browser. So local storage does also have the ability uh, to, uh, or to let us clear values or delete variables in local storage, um, but we'll cover that uh, in the next video.